morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Yesterday I edited the video on um, finding this out right here, okay? Putting imaginary parts into the exponential integral and so on. And in the end, I actually posted something which I had to cut out. I had to speed it up because it was fundamentally wrong. I simply plugged our definition for i in being negative e1 of negative i z and then I just assumed, well, yeah, it should work out. But this has been fundamentally wrong and that's why I'm creating this complementary video at the end of this whole special function series. We are going to find out how symmetric c and c are exactly, okay? The cosine integral and the sine integral. And for this we are just going to plug in negative values, okay? This is simply what we are going to do and thus we can find out how our ei, our exponential integral of imaginary arguments actually looks like. One thing I want you guys to notice is that the cosine integral and the sine integral are purely real values at the moment. But what is going to happen if you plug in negative stuff, okay? We are going to start off with C, C sir, fliegen zum Mond, C, okay? Fly to the moon, C sir, negative one. And then we are going to see what happens. Okay, negative z, and then we are going to have negative z to the 2k plus one power. Now, this one is a really easy case because we can break it up. This is z to the 2k plus 1 power times a negative 1 to the 2k plus 1 power. This is what we are going to have right now. Now, I want you guys to notice something. Negative 1 to the something even power is going to reduce to positive one and then we are going to have negative one to the first power, meaning we can just bring it to the front. We are going to get rid of all of this and finally we are going to end up with the expression negative the sine integral offset. This is something you would certainly expect because the sine of negative x is negative the sine of x. Okay, this is cool, we have found this out. Now we are going to plug in a negative value into our z. Okay, meaning we are going to end up with cosine integral of negative z being equal to, okay, oily macaroni stays how it is, it's a constant, but we are going to have natural log of negative z, this is interesting, and also negative z to the 2k power. By the same argumentation, we are going to break this up into z to the 2k power times negative 1 to the 2k power. And you might notice negative one to an even power is going to result in positive one. This is going to be preserved. We would expect this, okay? Cosine of negative x to cosine of x is an even function. But here comes the really trippy part and we are going to, as always, simply consider the principal branch of the logarithm, okay? The L-O-G with the capital L, okay? Natural log of negative z. If we only consider the principal branch, we can rewrite the natural log of negative z as being the natural log of negative 1 plus the natural log of z. Meaning we can simply have our natural log of z right here but we also have the natural log of negative 1. Okay now we are going to do some simple complex analysis meaning here is negative 1. If we were to express this complex number negative 1 we would end up with a pi rotation in the positive direction basically. So e to the um, i times pi. Now we can take the natural log on both sides, ending up with simply i pi then. Okay, natural log of negative one is i pi. This is not surprising at all. And thus, we have decomposed this. Meaning, our z of negative z is thus. Okay, we are going to have negative oily macaroni, negative the natural log of z, and plus this chunk, which is the same part as in our original cosine integral, so cosine integral of z, but then minus the natural log of negative one, these us with negative i times pi. And this is interesting, right? Okay, you, you would expect if you were to plug in this negative one, okay, into there, this negative z, you would just end up with an even function, okay, but, but this is not the case from something purely real, we are going to end up with something imaginary. And now you can feel free to plug in this stuff into your definition of the um, i, okay, the exponential integral. 
this right here is the last part. So our i of z, or i times z in this case, has been nothing other than negative e1 of negative i times z, and this does by this definition. Okay, um, I'm going to put everything here, negative z of negative z is thus going to deliver the cosine integral of z minus i times pi, and also plus i times, well, negative z of z this time, plus i times negative z of z, siehst du, flicken zum Mond, minus pi over 2. Meaning overall this is going to reduce nicely to negative, the cosine integral of z, and then um, minus, I'm going to bring the negative sign to the front, i sine integral of z plus 3 pi over 2. And in the literature you are going to probably find this a bit differently because many people like to define the cosine integral in a different way, okay? They like to define it in a similar way than the c right here, the sine integral, so with the up and lower bounds change. It, it really depends on your literature that you are using, but this right here should be a valid definition. Correct me if I'm wrong. This has been the video and this concludes the series on the special functions. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, my comment, channel, if you like, buy those t-shirts, I create also support channel on Patreon. Up until next video, have a flammable day. Ciao. Ich wollte natürlich nur das Futter. Uh.